So the opener on the main show, Roman Reigns Goldberg for the Universal title. They went about six minutes. And the uh, story of the match, which I still haven't figured out, but, I mean, it's WWE, so I guess there isn't much to figure out. So Goldberg finally, uh, it was only five minutes, I shouldn't say finally, but Goldberg makes a comeback, and uh, he goes for the jackhammer, and uh, Roman hits a well, urinage for a near fall. This was early on. The, and then Reigns yeah. hits a Superman well, punch, goes for a spear, Goldberg hits his own spear, uh Goldberg goes for the jackhammer a second time, and this time Roman Reigns puts him in the guillotine. And Goldberg's here in this guillotine, and literally he fights his way to the ropes. He grabs the ropes with both hands. For reasons I cannot explain, the referee does not tell Roman Reigns to break, even though the dude is grabbing the ropes. Roman drags him back to the middle with the guillotine on, and Goldberg goes unconscious, and that was the finish. I presume in case Goldberg resigns, he'll have an out that he'd got the ropes and the ref didn't break it, but it was weird. Oh, I, I, mean, I don't I don't know. I don't know. He was the, hanging onto those ropes and the the announcers know. never called anything. I mean it was just like he smashed him into the ropes a couple of times and R- Roman Reigns just hung on, yeah. Um I don't know. I mean they didn't they didn't you know, they never brought that up or anything like that. So um well, no, but as a the fan, match. you're watching it going, how is this not a break? The dude's grabbing the ropes with two hands. Yeah. The, um, Goldberg hit him with two spears during the match. I figured Roman would like hit him with a spear and Goldberg would kick out. In fact, that never happened. Um, I mean, the whole thing is, is you know, both both the Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg match, It was the, the whole thing was Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg, are the, I mean, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, I should say, Brock Lesnar match. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar are the two biggest stars in the company, and nobody else is competitive with them. You know, the one guy who, in theory, could have been was Lashley, and he's out of action. And um, so they just destroy everyone, and that's that, leading to their big match. And, um, you know, I mean, that's been that's been kind of how it's been for months now. And this was the capper of just the everything is about making those two strong to build to try to make this a, you know, clash of the Titans big match because the match has taken place, you know, many, many times over the years. It's not a new match. Um, the feeling is, is you just the only thing to do is to create that Roman Reigns is at a different level than Roman Reigns has ever been. And Brock Lesnar as a baby face is just destroying everything in his path. And that's what this show was about. I, um, you know, the show was, uh, you had a lot of stars on it and it, you know, played into mania and all that. But when it was over, it really just felt, um, I don't know. It felt kind of lackluster to me. It's like it didn't. Nothing really sucked, but nothing was. I mean, like there was nothing great on the show um, other than I, I guess you could say the if you're into like Brock Lesnar destroying everyone, the finish of the men's chamber was very good. Um, but they rushed the match was rushed through um, and the women's match was really rushed through the women's chamber, which was fine. But, you know, I mean, aside from some um, Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley spots, it was pretty dead. And then, um, you know, the other matches were just, you know, a bunch of two-star matches, two-and-a-half-star matches, things like that. I, I liked McIntyre's match. I thought they worked very, very hard. But, you know, it was, um, you know, I mean, it, if, if you're, you know, it was a ridiculous amount of interference. You know, it was kind of like watching, um, you know, New Japan, um, you know, torture, you know, the, you know, house of torture guys you know what i mean we were just guys are just running in constantly over and over right in front of you know right in front of the ref granted it's no dq but it was kind of preposterous but you know that was the only way because obviously they um you know nobody believed that madcast Mo- madcap moss is going to be beating drew mcintyre anyway even with all that interference i don't think anyone really believed that was that could happen so that was the best they could do to get some drama into the match all right, so the main event was Lesnar, Lashley, AJ, Austin Theory, Riddle, and Seth Rollins in Elimination Chamber match. And it's a very easy match to recap. They got rid of Lashley due to injury, and then Brock Lesnar was supposed to be the last guy in, but he couldn't wait, and so he came in early because they were cutting time out of the match. And he proceeded to 
pin AJ Styles, pin Riddle, pin Seth Rollins, and then finally he gave Austin Theory, the last guy in, an F5 off the top of a pod, threw him in the ring, and pinned him. So he pinned every single person in this match, made them all look like geeks, essentially, because, I mean, everyone. it was just like 1F5 pin, 1F5 pin, 1F5 pin. He didn't even give uh, Austin Theory a second F5 after he threw him off the top of the pod. He just well, rolled well, him into that, the ring, that, covered that, him, that, pinned him. and that, that was enough. He did give... Austin Theory, a low blow spot. Like it wasn't like like he ran through all these guys. It's like one move. F five, F five, F five. So he's left with Austin Theory, and you figure he's just going to F five Austin Theory. But he did give Austin Theory a little bit with you know. But it was basically a low. Well, blow. yeah, but this is this is their thing, which is like, oh, you know, we'll get Austin Theory over here by letting uh, him getting a tiny little bit of heat on Brock Lesnar until Brock absolutely kills this guy with an F five off a pod and then pins him in the middle of the ring. I'm not sure that Austin Theory is, uh, in my opinion, any more over than he was before this match started. But uh, I don't think he so got at killed. All, yeah, he was just another guy. But I mean, like, you know, Riddle's got momentum. I mean, he's kind of, you know, and he's just, you know, whatever. But I mean, it's like what you know, everyone. I mean, they only care about the, you know, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar being superior to everyone. So everyone that's in there is going to be like a geek. This probably explains why Randy Orton wasn't in the match because Randy Orton's a guy who they protect from being a geek because, you know, when, you know, it has to do with your salary too, you know, but also his tenure and everything like that. But it is interesting that, um, you know, like with Riddle, you know, um, you know, they've done this with Riddle time after time after time. He kind of stays over as a comedy character, and it's not going to hurt him. I mean, it doesn't help him. I mean, it hurts. I guess it hurts him a little bit. But, you know, where they, where they have him slotted, I don't think it really hurts. It's just, it's just, you know, they don't, they don't treat him like he's a guy who should be going for the world title. Although, perhaps, if they want to get new blood in the main events scene, they should. But, um, you know, and... But Seth and, and AJ, I mean, Seth is usually protected. He wasn't here. AJ just came off like nothing. And the other thing is, is like the match itself until Brock got in, I mean, it was guys going through paces and everything, and everybody's professional, and nothing was bad, but it's just like it was nothing. You know, like there was no highlights of the match. It's just guys coming in, you know, for two minutes doing their thing. Then another guy came in. I mean, there was no – the only highlight of the match – was Brock Lesnar's F five off the pod? That was pretty much it, and the the little bump that the, that you know where they broke into uh, Lashley's pod to take him out. I mean, that's that was the whole story of the match. So it was a as elimination chamber matches go, um, you know, I mean, I, I would say it was probably the weakest men's elimination chamber match, and the women's elimination chamber match wasn't wasn't anything special either. And even so, the, All right, let's, the men's chamber match was still probably, in some ways, the most, you know, most people had that as the best match on the show. And I, I wouldn't even disagree because what's the competition? You know what I mean? It's like the only other one is Drew McIntyre's match because everything else was just there. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.